hey guys it's sarah welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are all doing amazing today's video is super exciting because i'm going to be doing a full day of only eating food from dollar tree so in my previous video we did a dollar tree grocery haul that's where i shopped for all the food items in this video we're going to cook them share the recipes and i'm going to show you guys exactly what i ate from the time i woke up to the time i went to sleep and it's all one dollar items if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more like this definitely subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend because sharing is caring and it helps me out more than you will ever know let's get started with breakfast first i always start with coffee but the night before i started meal prepping overnight oats it's one of my favorite things to have in the morning and i'm going to share how to make it maple brown sugar dollar tree style the ingredients that you'll need is the quick oats agave light brown sugar i added in chia seeds a little bit of vanilla extract and kosher salt so you're going to start with a mason jar that has a lid i did about a tablespoon or two of chia seeds right at the bottom the measurements for the rolled oats is one cup rolled oats to one cup milk this is probably for like two servings it was a lot of oatmeal so i would definitely recommend cutting it in half the more milk you the more milk that you use the creamier it'll be so if you want it to be more firm use a little bit less milk then you're going to want to add in about a tablespoon of the agave about a tablespoon or two of brown sugar you can add in other things like vanilla extract if you have it i would not use the imitation vanilla extract it's not really necessary um, and i would also recommend do not add in too much because you're letting this sit overnight if there's not enough sugar or sweetness in it you can always add some in the next day but when you add in too much it's really hard to go back so once it's all prepped you can stir it up you can put it in your fridge and this is good for about three days so you can meal prep this out so that you have it for a couple of days you can add in fresh fruit like bananas apples it's super delicious i absolutely love it it and it's super easy to make. So I meal prepped that the night before and when I woke up it was time to make my coffee. We're going to make our cookie butter Nutella whipped coffee. To make the cookie butter Nutella creamer we're going to start by taking the Dollar Tree almond milk creamer that they had. I saved a bunch of them from a while back so I was happy that I had it. I added in about two cups of the milk and I did two tablespoons of the cookie butter Nutella. Put it in your blender and blend it up. Once it's all blended, you can store it in the same type of mason jar so you can drink it throughout the week. But this is going to be so creamy and so good. It's going to be the base of our coffee. I'm using the Nescafe Taster's Choice for the whipped coffee. I also shared this in the same exact video. So check in the description box below if you want measurements and exactly how to do it. But we're going to be using this as our whipped, co as our whipped coffee topping. This is super strong. You don't need a lot. It really gets you going for the day. It's rich and it's creamy and it's so delicious. I highly recommend trying the creamer recipe. It's so good. I give this a 9 out of 10. Definitely would recommend. Let's move on now to breakfast for the kids. I'm going to make them waffle and sausage. We are going to be using the Dollar Tree pancake waffle mix, but we are not going to be following the directions that are on the back. Do not do that. I'm going to show you how you can take it up a notch. For the waffle maker, I got it from Target. It's from their brand Oyster. I'll link it down below. It's super easy to use and no mess. To make our waffles, we're going to use one cup of the waffle mix, one cup of milk. I started off with one egg, but you're going to need two eggs. You're also going to need about a teaspoon of baking powder, a pinch of kosher salt, um, and then you can add in the vanilla extract if you have it and want to use it, but it's not necessary. Once I was all mixing, I realized that I needed to add in the baking powder and also the kosher salt. Dollar Tree does sell baking powder. It's different than baking soda, so make sure you're getting baking powder. And then a pinch of the kosher salt, and I just use the Dollar Tree version. I just keep mine in a little mason jar that I got from Dollar Tree as well. It just makes it easy access. I'm going to let that sit while our waffle maker heats up, and we're going to go ahead and cook the sausage. To make your sausage pop, you're going to cook it like you normally would. Put a lid on it, let it cook through. But once it's almost done, you're going to take about a tablespoon of butter. This is just the margarine that I found at Dollar Tree. Let that go in the pan till it melts. Then you're going to add in either maple syrup. You can use agave. You could use just like your regular pancake syrup. 
you're going to add that into the pan as well add in a sprinkle of brown sugar and let that all cook and get gooey and delicious and this is going to be your new favorite way to have sausage i promise you after that, you're gonna take your fully mixed waffle mix and you're gonna add it into your waffle maker. This is gonna make the most perfect waffles. Just watch. I took some of the Dollar Tree powdered sugar, sifted it right on top, took a little bit of butter, syrup, added our sausage. You could do fruit on top, you could do chocolate chip. You can really take it up a notch if you wanted to add different things, but these are super delicious, really, really good and easy to make, especially for a weekend breakfast. While the kids ate their breakfast, I grabbed my overnight oats. I just sat on the couch and ate with them. You can heat up your overnight oats if you like to have warm oatmeal, and you can top it with just about anything. Breakfast was a solid 8 out of 10. I definitely would recommend trying the waffle and sausage. The overnight oats were a little bit runny for me. I would definitely use less milk next time, but altogether, I think healthy-wise, it was like, okay, not too bad. You let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm partially dressed for the day. I have to finish putting my lipstick on. But we had coffee, we had breakfast, now we're gonna have water. Um, I do feel like I wanna have a little snack, so maybe I'll have something like that. And we're gonna do all of that. Let's go. For lunch, I made this really easy shrimp spinach tomato soup. It's absolutely delicious, and you can meal prep this ahead of time as well. I'm starting by taking the TJ Farm pepper and onion blend, and I'm separating the peppers from the onions because there were so many onions and chopping those into bite-sized pieces. Now we're going to go and grab our shrimp. This is the thaw and serve shrimp, so it's already cooked. I just want to give it flavor, so I'm going to add it into our pot. I'm adding in some seasonings and just making sure that all the water and moisture comes out of the shrimp so that number one, it doesn't make our soup watery and number two, we can give it some flavor. I did add some of the margarine into the pan at first and then I'll have a list of all the seasonings that I used for this recipe in the description box below, but they are all from Dollar Tree. Once the shrimp are thawed out, we're gonna take them out of the pot and put them off to the side. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our onions right back into that pot that we just used. It's okay if there's seasoning left in the pot, that's just gonna make it taste even better. So you can see here how much peppers and onions I used and we're just gonna saute those because all the frozen vegetables hold moisture. The more moisture, the watery it's gonna be and it's not gonna have a lot of flavor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of saute those so that all the water and the moisture and it kind of softens them a bit. So I just added in about two tablespoons of the Dollar Tree minced garlic. You can add in more or less depending on your liking. And then we're gonna add in one can of drained Rotel tomatoes. That's the tomatoes with the green chili. It's gonna give it a little bit of kick. And now we're gonna saute all of that together. Once it's kind of nice and soft, we're going to add in one packet of Saison. This is from Dollar Tree. They sell it there. It's amazing in soup. It kind of takes it up to the next level, but I do wish I only added in half the pack. So once that's added, we're going to add in one full thing of the Dollar Tree chicken broth. Now I'm adding in one packet of the Goya chicken bouillon. This is powdered bouillon, so this is good for a soup. I'm actually adding in some more seasoning. So we have some Badia seasoning. Add the seasoning to your own liking. This may be too flavorful for some people, but you really just want to taste it as you go. Add in a couple of bay leaves, and now you're going to let this bad boy simmer. I bring it to a boil, and then I turn it down, and you can let it simmer for 10 minutes. You can let it simmer for two hours. Once the flavors have all come together, you can add your shrimp back into the pot. You can add in some spinach. I use the TJ Farms cut spinach leaves. I also added in a splash of the Dollar Tree lemon juice. Now I wanted to put some rice at the bottom, so I decided to use the Dollar Tree broccoli cauliflower rice that's in the frozen section. I just took a tablespoon of butter in a skillet and I'm gonna crisp it up so it's nice and crunchy, kind of like rice. We're gonna add that to the bottom of our bowl and then we're gonna place our shrimp tomato spinach soup right on top. Solid seven. If you're nervous about shrimp from the Dollar Tree, don't be. It's not bad. Next time, I'll make sure that I take the tails off before I cook it because that's been annoying. 
and I would use, if I had a chance, if I did it over, which I probably would, um, I would use half a packet of the Saison. I just don't think there was enough soup to use all that Saison, so it has like a thicker taste to it, but. Or maybe just not do um, the Boyan and the Saison, do one or the other. But it's good, y'all. If you're on a budget, baby, try it. Peppers, onions, and that's the thing, when I come up with Dollar Tree recipes, I wanna try to give healthier, healthy-ish. You guys know I'm not healthy, I'm far from healthy. But I wanna do something like well-balanced, something that, you know what I mean? We can all go to Dollar Tree, get pasta and sauce and have it like that, but how can you utilize Dollar Tree items in a in a more thought out way? This soup, definitely good. Even if you don't want to use shrimp from the Dollar Tree, you could go to the regular grocery store, get shrimp, get crab, I think any type of meat that just can easily take on flavor. I think chicken, uh, I don't know, but I think seafood would be really good in here. You could do this with like mussels, something like that because it has like that good taste. So, big fan. I don't know if I'm going to eat all this, but my husband tried it, he liked it, so. All right, you guys, lunch is done. We had water with our lunch. Um, I'll probably come back for an afternoon pick-me-up and a snack, so we'll be back in a little bit. For dinner, we're going to make lazy lasagna Dollar Tree style. We're going to start by getting three or four packages of the cheese raviolis. Jenny O turkey burgers, I use three of those, prego, garlic herb sauce, and then mozzarella cheese. We're going to start by cutting down our ground turkey. This is literally just ground turkey, so you want to make sure that you're cooking it like ground turkey and not like a burger. And you're going to cook it so that you don't see any more pink. You're gonna notice a ton of moisture coming from this, so make sure you drain all that liquid out. I'm just using a Dollar Tree tin pan to make the lasagna. I didn't film the first portion, but you wanna start by doing a nice layer of sauce. You're gonna add in your raviolis in a nice line, then you're gonna add in cheese. The more cheese, the firmer it's gonna to be together, so add in a good portion. I just had to shred my Dollar Tree cheese, and then do a layer of meat. The meat is optional, you don't really have to do it, and then you're gonna repeat that step about three times to give you like a good thick lasagna size. I just did my ravioli, my sauce, and then I topped it with cheese. I did have to use cheese from my fridge because I ran out and there wasn't enough, but you want to make sure that there's enough sauce to cover the ravioli so that they cook through and then enough cheese to make it to make it good. <laughs> I topped it with Parmesan cheese as well, and then you want to bake it in the oven. I added foil on top so that it didn't brown too fast for about 50 minutes. So while that was cooking, I had a snack because I was starting to get hungry. So I made the Canada Dry packet that you add into water, and that was good. I would give that a solid six. It was not my favorite because it was sugar-free, but it was pretty good. 
and then i tried these dollar tree crumb cakes from i think there's from baker's choice one of my favorite companies at dollar tree is baker's choice they make really good little snack cakes and this was the cinnamon crumble cake and it was pretty good i would rate that a 7 out of 10. Once I noticed the lazy lasagna starting to bubble, I took the foil off and left it in the oven for about 10 more minutes just so that it would get nice and brown. I took it out of the oven and I let it sit before I cut it. When I cut it, it still was just like raviolis, but it was super easy to make for an easy weeknight meal that does not cost a lot of money. I would highly, highly recommend this. You can make it with regular ground beef from the grocery store or ground sausage Whatever you have on hand, I served it with Texas toast. You could add in some more veggies if you want to make it a more well-balanced meal for the kiddos. Our whole entire family loved it and it was delicious. This is a 9 out of 10 for sure for me. If you're new around here, hi, my name is Sarah and I'm obsessed with a sweet treat before I go to bed. Tonight we were having a movie night with Quincy, so I'm making a fun popcorn. We're going to use the old school Jolly Time popcorn kernels. We're going to make it the old fashioned way and then we're adding in things like Reese Pieces, Goldfish, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios. We did peanuts. You could add in whatever you want, but we just added in things that we liked. We need to start by making the popcorn old school style. It's one third of a cup kernels with a little bit of oil in a pot that has a lid. You want to talk about nostalgia, you guys. Make popcorn this way. It gave me all the feels and it cooks in minutes. Just keep an eye on it and be sure not to let all the popcorn pop right out of your pan. In that same pot, I added in about a half a stick of butter just to melt it down and to add it into our popcorn. This step is unnecessary, but totally delicious. Then I added in all of our fun toppings. Once they were all added in, I gave it a good mix. You can store this in a Ziploc baggie if you want to keep it for a couple of days. It does hold up nicely. And because it was all kind of warm, all the chocolate started to melt and it kind of tastes like kettle corn. Definitely loved it. This was absolutely delicious. Something that I would make again and kind of make it a little bit more fun next time with some other things. Adult style could be fun because Quincy is very picky with his candy. But I like it. I would definitely give it an 8 out of 10. So that is the end of the video. That is a full day of what I ate from Dollar Tree and rating everything that I ate. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that it gave you guys some budget friendly meal ideas. If you try any of these recipes or if you like any of them, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I love you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. If you are a real one, go ahead and leave the hidden word best in the comment section down below. This was a long video, so if you're still here, I appreciate you. Leave the word best in the comment section down below, and I will feature some of you guys in my next video. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope you're all safe, happy, and healthy, and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye, you guys.